Thank you. Well, once young is right, isn't it? My goodness. Well, thank you, John. I, uh, it's so good to be back. My wife, Jan, she's, where are you, Jan? Yeah, and back in the middle. It's good to be here. As John mentioned, uh, 27 years ago, in July of 1991, my wife and I had just moved here to the area, and we were looking for a non-denominational Bible-believing church. Looked in the yellow pages and found Faith Community Church. We pulled into the parking lot um, one Sunday morning, took a deep breath, got out of the car, took a deep breath, and walked in, and Pastor Ed Regensburg, you know, founding pastor here, didn't preach that Sunday, but we were sold on the church because I remember specifically that six people shook our hands, and it was a much smaller church then. We came back the next Sunday, the next Sunday, and for the next nine years, we were here at, here at Faith. Those were tremendous years for our family. Our kids grew up. They were just really, un one was unborn, and one was one and three when we got here, involved in Awana and involved in Sunday school and church picnics, all those things. But it was um, the missional emphasis, again, as John mentioned, the, the focus on missions at faith really changed our hearts. I was pursuing uh, graduate studies at Capitol Bible Seminary while I was working at NASA, and after nine years, um, we decided to make the move from uh, living here and working in the States to Papua New Guinea. And I still remember um, the last day I was at NASA. It was the end of 2000, walking down the hallway, looking back, and seeing my office door that I'd closed and locked, and saying, okay, this starts a new journey for us. The next day, my wife and three young kids, we got on the plane and flew to the mountains of Papua New Guinea. And a tremendous move for us, tremendous move. Tremendous time of change for us, but a tremendous move. And we were there for 15 years, ministering, uh, teaching at a Baba college, doing some administration. My wife was involved in some teaching and registrar work. Our kids grew up there, went to boarding school, Kids came back to um, the stage, went to college, finished school, and they're out in the work, working world. Our daughter, who's now 30, she was three when we first started coming here, um, is now a mother of our two grandchildren. And uh, so it's, it's just great to be here and reflect back on God's faithfulness uh, during change. We all have change in our life. Some we bring on ourselves, some were, or come up on us, but we all have changed. And yeah, um, Steve Bond, thank you for the songs you, you had this morning, and God will take care of you, and a mighty fortress is our God. In fact, I'll, I'll refer to that uh, uh, song a little, little later in the sermon, but uh, yeah, it's great to be here. A lot of water's gone under the bridge. Um, we do have another change coming, but I, I had emailed John... Um, a few weeks ago, and I said, John, we'd, you know, we're, we're finishing our time as full-time missionary work, moving in a new direction, and we'd really like to come back and say thank you to everyone at Faith for the faithful service. So that began this discussion, and we've had a great week, a weekend here. We are able to have a, a potluck with the missions committee on Friday night. Looking forward to the potluck after service today and be able to c connect with, with many of you. So, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of an emotional time for us as you can imagine, with all these changes, um, but it's a wonderful time, and we, we, re we really appreciate it um, here. So, um, we've always appreciated faith and its emphasis on missions. Um, some people talk about the call of, well, you talk about the call of God to missions, to ministry, whatever, and it, it can be a long process, and for us, it was a nine-year process of attending missions conferences here at Faith, hearing stories of what God was doing around the world. And after nine years, we took a short-term missions trip to Papua New Guinea. Some of you may remember Wayne and Belinda Bauman. They were missionaries out of faith, or that faith supported. And they were in the jungles of Papua New Guinea. We took a short-term missions trip there for about, we did two weeks. Took my family and three kids, and I taught pastors there for a week. 
they would ride their bikes and come in from all over the area to this little village um, building in this, this little village in the middle of nowhere in Papua New Guinea. And uh, I tell everybody it was one of the best weeks of my life. We just, we just loved it. And we were committed at, after that point to going back to pa Papua New Guinea. Heard about a Bible college that needed teachers there. I was finishing up my master's degree. And so we came back to the stage, joined Pioneers. We played, prayed for the Fletchers this morning with Pioneers. We were with Pioneers for 15 years over there and then uh, raised support and moved, moved over to, to Pop, Papua New Guinea. So our three kids grew up there, as I said, went to boarding school, and uh, now we're all back in the States. Um, but there, there is a change of coming. We feel led to, and, and to, to finish up our missionary work and return to where we grew up in Boise, where I grew up in Boise, Idaho. Jan and I went, met in college there and got married and married there. So um, at the end of this month, at the end of, end of May, uh, in another month, the school year will be finishing at Indian Bible College where we are, and we've given our notice that we'll be moving back to, to, to Boise, Boise there. So. Um, we're very excited. We have our two sons that live in Boise, Idaho. Uh, Jan's dad lives in Boise, Idaho. Jan has a number of relatives in the area. My dad lives in Idaho. Uh, we, uh, my mother lives in the state of Washington, not far. And uh, so we really like to be near a family. One of the reasons we moved back from Papua New Guinea three years ago was to be near family. Two of the kids live in Boise, Idaho. Our daughter lives in Minnesota with her husband and our two grandkids. And so Arizona was closer to family, but still much closer than Papua New Guinea, but still not as close as we wanted. So um, our kids grew up, they, you know, they went to boarding school. And so there was a lot of separation with our kids. You know, there's, there's, there's some trade-offs in, in missionary life, some kind of prices you pay. Um, it was a great experience for our kids, but we would like to continue to be with them and, and be, be family, so uh, we'll be moving back to uh, Boise, Idaho. We're trying to get our daughter, Krista, to move from Minnesota. Uh, they live up in Duluth, if you've ever been to Duluth, it's right near Lake Superior, right on Lake Superior there, and uh, winters can get long. Her husband has a good job up there, but he would really like to move into ministry, and so he would like to be able to free up some time in his schedule to do an online seminary courses that he's pursuing and move into ministry. So. Hopefully we can get them out there to Boise, Idaho with us and somehow help them be able to achieve the goal of moving into ministry. He's currently an aero, aeronautical engineer with a company up there that builds corporate jets, so it'll be quite a change, quite a change for him. So, uh, yeah, so if you're passing through Boise, Idaho, please come visit us. We are, we'll get settled in over the next, next few months. Our son, some of you know our, our two sons, Ryan and Trevor. Ryan's now 27 and Trevor's 26. Again, when we first started coming to faith, Ryan was one, one year old. Um, he was a cute kid. I still remember um, one time we came to a Sunday evening service and, you know, there's was, was probably a couple dozen folks and it was the old sanctuary. Some of you remember that. And uh, Jan was holding Ryan just holding him and kind of sitting midway towards the back in the sanctuary. And Pastor Ed Regensburg was, he was trying to teach in front of us. And uh, the ladies kind of around Ryan kept turning and looking at him because, you know, he was kind of cute, making goo-goo goo sounds or something. And then Ed stopped and said, hey, ladies, I'm up here. I'm up here. <laughs> Look up here. And uh, so I fond memories of that. Yeah, we really appreciated Ed's, um, Ed's ministry to us. Um, I, I, I told this story earlier at the missions conference, but I still remember that the first Sunday we came to faith, Ed wasn't preaching like I mentioned, but he introduced himself. The next Sunday we came, after service he was approaching us. I saw him look at me, saw him turn around and walk away, pull out this little black book, and I'm sure he was looking at our names that he had written down to help remember who we were. So he turned around and said, hi, Doug and Jan, so nice to see you again. And that we just spoke volumes to us, just vol volumes to us. So, um, yeah, so we, we found a home and, and that was, um, yeah, it's been an exciting journey since then. 
for the last uh, three years, we have been at Indian Baba College, and as John mentioned, the work team came out there a couple years ago from Faith, and we really appreciated that and the work that they did. Um, Jan has been serving as registrar there, like she was at the Christian Leaders Training College in Papua New Guinea, but also doing some teaching there. Um, my main job has been raising money for the college. I've been director of development. Um, don't mind getting out and talking to people and knocking on doors and things like that. That's what the college really needed. It's been a success in many ways. When we first got there three years ago, the, we were averaging about a half a million dollars in fundraising. Now, this year, we should be approaching close to a million and a half in fundraising. So it's been a, a good journey in many ways. I've been able to do some, some teaching there. It's a small college that trains Native Americans for ministry. Most of them come from reservations and go back to, back to re reservations. And uh, Indian Baba College is really a home. They can feel out of place. Native Americans can feel out of place in the bigger society here. And so uh, it's been a good, good mi ministry in, in that re regard. You know, in Esther chapter 4, verse 14, Mordecai tells Esther that you have been put in a position uh, for a time such as this. And that's kind of how we feel with both our time in Papua New Guinea and our time in Arizona, Indian Bible College, for a time such as this. God uses for certain reasons and certain places and now we feel our time is, is, is changing, the times are changing. I like the title, I don't know who came up with the title for out, in the, out on the street there, the times are changing on the bulletin board out there, but it's very, very appropriate. So I feel the times are changing, um, but we kind of reflect on, uh, you know, every time that God gives you, every place God puts you, there's a purpose, and uh, we've appreciated his faithfulness to do that. We are moving in a new direction, as John said, we'll be finishing up with missionary support, um, and I'm going to be working for a company called Thrivent, Thrive, Thrive with an NT on the end, and I'll be becoming a financial advisor with them. It's a Fortune 500 company, and many of you may never heard of it, because for over 100 years, it was a company just for Lutherans, so perhaps you have some Lutherans, friends, or, or family and uh, they provide financial services to, to uh, Christians. About six or eight years ago, they, they changed it and opened it up to other Christians besides Lutherans. So it's a business, but it's a very much of a ministry also. They give a lot of money to Habitat for Humanity. They help support short-term missions trips. And it's a, lar it's a nonprofit, the only nonprofit in the Fortune 500 company. And so I'm busy right now, some of you might have experienced this or know of others, studying for my securities exam. And I've got a bachelor's, three masters, and a doctorate, and this is the hardest test that I've ever had to study for. They estimate 200 hours studying everything you want to know about stocks and bonds and options and rules and regulations, and about 200 hours of studying. It's going to be a six-hour test I have to take probably in June. I'm taking little interim tests. I was so excited. Um, um, I, I study a little bit, and they have you take a practice test over that section. They study, take a practice test, and before we got in the plane earlier this week, I was able to s successfully pass the options test, you know, with calls and puts and straddles and spreads and uh, I was, I, I mean, I've passed lots of tests in my life, life, but that was one of the most exciting tests that I've been able to, to pass. So, anyway, I would appreciate your prayer in that regard as we transition to Boise, get settled in there, um, start this new career. One thing's exciting, again, I mentioned draw, coming to Idaho as, as part of our draw to um, be near family. Our two sons, I mentioned, live in Idaho. Our oldest son recently bought a duplex. And he'd been talking about this for about a year or two, and he said, Dad, I want to buy a duplex, and you guys come live next to us. We want to buy a duplex, and you come live next to us. So that's what's happening. Our two sons are living in one half, and we're going to be living in their other half. We'll live in there for a while until we get settled, and eventually wants to, to rent it out to others. But uh, So, yeah, it's, it's amazing how God, God kind of orchestrates. Again, the call of God and direction and sorting all that out can be, can be challenging, but... Uh, we put our house up for sale in, in, in Flagstaff, Arizona. It sold in one day at our asking price, and so uh, we're, we're excited about that. So things are, things are coming together, and, um, but it will be a change. We do want to 
we do really want to thank you as Faith Community Church for your faithful support. Many of you may not know, but for the last 18 years, Faith Community Church has been supporting us at $2,500 a month. $2,500 a month for 18 years. I don't know what that is, two-thirds of a million dollars or something by now. When we tell other missionaries who are on support, obviously, they just can't believe the faithfulness the Faith Community Church has to us. In fact, I know it's called, we know, I know we call it Faith Community Church, but in my mind, it should be Faithful Community Church, because you really have been faithful. So we just want to say, give our heartfelt thank you. Thank you for, for your support. There are some um, per people I'd like to personally thank. Um, Dave and Nancy Cole uh, have been tremendous support o over the years, and the missions committee, we stored things in their attic when we went to Papua New Guinea, sent us encouraging emails, helped us find houses on furloughs, uh, dinners at their house. Uh, Chris and Brenda Handel uh, did our newsletter for many years. We would s email back some texts and some pictures. They would print it out in a color printer, um, put it in the mail, and send it out to us. That was back in uh, before MailChimp and all the new technology we use now, so we appreciate that. Um, Mike and Diane Smith have let us stay in their apartment for many, year, many times over the years. Uh, Jim and Peggy Johnson, Jim came and they visited us probably 15, 16 years ago in Papua New Guinea. Jim caught self-confrontation, and I remember Peggy, I think her job was to try to reduce the mouse population in the apartment they were staying in. <laughs> and uh, I, just, I just remember that. I don't know if she was successful, but she certainly was trying to. Um, and then John Stevens, appreciate the work team that you led, and everyone that was on the work team that came out a couple years ago. And I've encouraged the missions committee when we met with them, please consider su continuing to support Indian Baba College. It's a very strategic ministry. It's an overlooked people group in our own country that the gospel has not penetrated as much as it nearly should have in 200 years or over 200 years of mission and work among the natives. So please continue to support them. Jan and I, we envision coming back and being adjunct teachers on a, a short term. Um, times and continue to pray for the college. So it's, a, again, a strategic ministry, so please continue to support them. Um, yeah, we also want to thank you. Uh, we're staying with Alex and Lisa Lively, and uh, they're showing hospitality to us while we're here. Uh, yeah, just the missions committee in general, all the people that have served on that over the years. I don't know if there's a card committee, um, but we've appreciated all the cards we've gotten over the years, birthday cards, anniversary cards, um, and the like. Um, Steve Bond, appreciate all your administrative and logistical support in so many ways as we've come back and forth from, from the field, uh, and the lunches we had. Um, Jan wanted me to thank everyone that donated to our children's library. In Papua New Guinea, we had a children's library, and Jan, um, we would open it up on Saturdays, and the village youth and, and the youth from the college, uh, Christian Leaders Training College, would come in and be able to to uh, borrow books, and, and so a number of you had donated to that. We appreciate that. Some of you loaned us cars and furniture um, over the years, and also a prayer quilt. When we first left, um, we had a commissioning ceremony. Um, I still remember Steve Bonds asking me what songs we wanted to sing at that commissioning ceremony back in the uh, end of 2000, but to a prayer quilt. The church made and gave us a prayer quilt. We've kept that all these years. It's now with us in Arizona. We'll take it to Idaho, just something to hang on the wall. So good, good memories there. So anyway, I'm sure there's others that I, I should be thanking publicly, but we really wanted to, to thank, thank everyone in that regard. So I was asked to speak on God's faith, faithfulness, and I guess I've got about 15 minutes to. Besides the story in our life, there are some passages I'd really like, like to uh, to uh, turn to. So turn with me to Matthew 28, verse 20, the last chapter, I mean last verse in the book of Matthew. And let me just spend a few times, some biblical examples of God's faithfulness to us. We can experience in our own lives, but um, hearing from scripture and experience in other people's lives. So in Matthew 28, the end of uh, Matthew, in, um, Jesus is resurrected and he's getting ready to ascend, and the very last verse says, and surely, this is verse 20, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
often we look at this, the verse 19 and the Great Commission, and it's a good missionary passage, and spoke on that before, but I'd just like to focus a little bit on this. Surely I am with you always. Uh, this is in, in NIV I've, I've got here, but surely, you know, it's some of you might have low, I am with you always, kind of good old um, language there. It, it doesn't say maybe I'm with you always. It doesn't say perhaps, possibly. It doesn't say, hey, once in a while. Surely I'm with you always. So right away, there should be a confidence that um, we, we have in, God, in God's presence. And then next it says, I am, surely I am with you. It's interesting in the Greek, depending on how you structure the Greek words, it puts different emphasis on it. In the Greek, I is the very first word in that Greek construction, and I could be put elsewhere, but I is there, ego. And so it really impresses upon us, uh, Jesus says, I, I myself am with you. It's interesting, if you remember earlier in Matthew, um, when they're announcing Jesus' birth, and they were going to call his name Emmanuel, his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. You know, we often think of that just during his incarnation, but we realize that, no, that's an eternal truth. I, Jesus Christ, am with you, am with you always. Um, I was, uh, some of you may have seen the original Star Wars, and I think I got this right with Yoda. Remember little Yoda there? He would always kind of turn things around in his, in his grammar. I think he, um, Jesus says, I am with you always, whereas Yoda might have said, with you I am. What do you think? Did I get that right, maybe? It's just a uh, different em emphasis. I am with you always. So Jesus wants to make an emphatic statement of his personal presence with us. Um, he says, Surely I'm with you always. Again, some of your translations may say something else. Um, you know, he doesn't say I'm with you once in a while, not with you when I decide to stop by. Uh, you know, time to time, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say every so often, periodically, erratically, you know, on and off. I'm with you always. I am with you always. And how long is he with us? To the very end of end of the age, Yogi Berra is attributed to saying, "It ain't over till it's over." Well, God is with us. Jesus is with us until the end of time. And those those words have been uh, very uh, comforting, assuring to us. We had some some challenges in Papua New Guinea just from a different cultural. I can remember one. Um, one story, I've got lots of stories, I'm not going to be able to fill all them, do all of them today, but um, just one story. We had been over to Papua New Guinea about three, three months. We had moved into a house that the college had, an older house, and needed some painting, so we had a village painter come and, and paint it. During that time, we got to know him, and he, he had had a, a, a daughter, daughter born during that time, and they have a naming ceremony that they, they do sometime after birth. And they decided to name their daughter the same name as our daughter, Krista. Actually, they, they changed it to Christy. But they have a naming ceremony where they honor the person that it's being named after. So that was our daughter, Krista. And she was all of 12 at that time. She had grown up in Bowie, played on soccer teams, swim teams, and all. And I, we had taken her to the jungles of Papua New Guinea, three months off the boat, so to speak. During the ceremony... They honored the person that they made, that, that they named the child after by giving them a cooked pig's head. So here's my 12-year-old daughter standing there, and across, when everybody's looking, they brought her a cooked pig's head on a platter. Now, she was a suburban, Maryland suburban girl. She did, she did excellent. She held it for about five seconds, turned to me with tears welling up in her eyes, and said, Dad, can you take this? I grabbed it from her. She maintained her composure, but um, I think we gave the pig's head back. I don't know if it was appropriate or not, but I don't know what we were going to do with it, uh, this cook, cook's pet, pig's head. But we were so out of our comfort zone, and you really, as a father, wonder, man, what am I doing? What am I doing with my family? But in hindsight, and even during that time, you know, God is with you. God is with you as you encounter new challenges in life, things that are different, things you don't expect. We had just gotten off the plane over there. The very first day we arrived there, and our daughter Chris had an earache. 
and we had to find this Papua New Guinea nurse to be able to treat it. And our daughter was in tears uh, there. Obviously, her ear was hurting, jet lag and everything. But again, as a father, you're thinking, well, what am I doing? But God was with us. Our kids now look back, and, and going to the mission field was an outstanding experience for them. Outstanding. So, but, um, so Matthew 28, 20. Surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Um, if you look at end of Mark real quick, um, Mark has a little different version of, of, of this, just some different words. Mark uh, um, 16, 19, and 20. And he says there that uh, the Lord worked with them. This is after his ascension. So... Uh, verse 19, and after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them in Mark 16, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them. The Lord continued to be with the disciples as they were out, out ministering. Um, go ahead and turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy 31 this is when Moses, just before the Israelites go into the promised land, and uh, Moses has been told by God that he's not going in to go to the promised land. A change is coming. Joshua is going to take over the, the, the leadership. And so Moses is kind of giving his final admonitions, final farewell, final blessing to the nation of, of Israel. And it's, it's interesting uh, how he uses it. In Deuteronomy chapter th uh, 31, let me just start reading in verse 1. Then Moses went out and spoke these words to all Israel. I am now 120 years old and I'm no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you and will destroy these nations before you and you will take possession of their land. Joshua will cross over ahead of you and the Lord said... And the Lord will do to them what he did to, to Sion and Og, the king of the Amorites, whom he destroyed along with their land. The Lord will deliver them to you, and he must do to them all that I have commanded. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. This is in verse 6. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. He will never leave you or forsake you. God will never check out on us. God will never vamoose. Um, God will never make tracks. God will never split. Whatever words you want to use in contemporary English, he'll never desert us. He'll never cast us aside. He'll never give up on us. God is faithful with us. Uh, Second Chronicles uh, 32, if you want to turn there real quick. Um, in this, in Second Chronicles uh, 32, uh, Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, is, is attacking Jerusalem. And Hezekiah is, is the king, and he's preparing for this attack. He does a number of things. You can read through the first few verses of, of uh, chapter 32. He does a number of things to prepare the city for attack. And... Um, I'll just pick it up in verse 6 there. These are some of the things he's continued to do in chapter 32, 2 Chronicles. He appointed military officers over the people and assembled them before him in the square at the city gate and encouraged them with these words. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with, uh, with him. For there is a greater power with us than with him. With him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people gained confidence from what Hezekiah the king of Judah said. There's a reoccurring theme in some of these passages that God is with us. But this, this uh, end of uh, verse 8 is really the heart of this message. The people gained confidence from what Hezekiah said. 
we should, as we reflect on God's faithfulness, to gain confidence in no matter what changes we encounter in life. This is a big move for us. We're excited about it, but um, you know, not, not, not without a little bit of trepidation. I'll be moving from raising support, people supporting us, to living off a commission. Um, I, but it's interesting, when we were applying to pioneers years ago, they had us take all these personality tests, and one of the things that came out of the personalities test is, Doug, you like to take risks. I said, I don't understand. I'm the last person to jump out of an airplane. I mean, I just wouldn't do that. I said, no, you like to take risks in different ways. And so maybe this is part of how God, God made us, but to our, we're, we're moving out. But God, God is going to be with us in this change as he's been through all the other changes, and God will be with you as you go through changes. Um, let me just quickly return, uh, go to Psalm 46, and we'll finish up with this. And I really wanted to get to this, because this is a song. We sang, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, this morning. And uh, this is, apparently, Psalm 46 is the psalm that Martin Luther used to write that in the year 1529. 15, 20, and uh, so very appropriate that we, we, we sang it there. Let me just read it. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give away, the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the day at daybreak, that break of day. Nations are in an uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. Verse 7, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought upon the earth. He makes wars cease to, cease to the ends of the earth. And he breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. And then the, this famous verse, be still and know that I am God. In all of these changes, all these calamities around us, be still and know I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord God Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Over and over we see the Lord God is with us. So, more, many more stories of tr encountering tribal fights in Papua New Guinea, of experiences we've had with the Native Americans, uh, visiting reservations the last three years, um, challenges we, we face traveling in Papua New Guinea, lots of stories, and I had planned to fit all these in, but uh, God was faithful in all of those. As we maybe have lunch and potluck, we can continue to share some more of those, but... Um, Again, we really thank Faith Community Church for your support over the years, and God has been faithful to us. He'll be faithful to us in the future. God is faithful to you. He'll be faithful to you in the future. God's Word has told us that. We've, we've experienced it. Many of you have experienced it, too. So let's just close in prayer. Thank God for His faithfulness. So, Lord, we do thank you so much for your Word, and I pray that a lot in teaching, Lord, that... Um, Lord, your word is there. It's there to encourage us, challenge us, and we are so encouraged by these words today as we kind of took a short, quick journey through Scripture and saw your faithfulness, Lord, and your promise of faithfulness to us in the future, Lord, that you will be with us always. Surely I am with you. Lord, help each one of us. I know we come here and Many of us are experiencing changes or anticipate changes in our lives. Again, either ones we've brought on or be brought on upon us, Lord. Help us to take confidence from your message, from your word, I should say, Lord, that uh, you are alongside with us. Lord, you'll never forsake us. And Lord, we just praise you for that. I thank you for the, the fellowship we can have in the body of Christ, the encouragement we can have for one another. And uh, thank you for the encouragement it is for Jen and I to be here today. And and um, just reflect on your blessings in our life in so many ways, Lord. So we pray this in your name. Amen.